Creep. All right, just Boom. stopped in to get some gas real quick, and we're heading to Oregon City. But we got to fuel up. Pioneers would have gathered. We've got Mama Creeper in the house too. What's up, you crazy creeps? <laughs> Creep with us. Yep, we're gonna do a little creeping. And this place has got a lot of cool history and it's gonna be fun. We're gonna creep through here and then probably go get a little bite to eat at the Mike's Dine In. So we got Penelope with us too. And it's gonna be a good one. So stay tuned. Right here at the end of the Oregon trail historic site mama creepers live too doing a little vlogging and penelope's all excited so let's get in here and check out some history i'm excited there's a lot of cool little relics and things to look at and this is in downtown oregon city right on 17th street look at that you can actually go inside the it's like a little little dining area or like just kind of hang out this is cool. Look at how big this is, Mom. He was on there. Oh, he's on your live? Yeah, oh, very cool. Let's go up here for a minute and just kind of check things out, and then we'll make our way down this little path. She's all excited. Hey, this is cool. Isn't it? it looks like it's like a big barn in there, too. See the big door? Oh, I see. Yeah, you can all kinds of events and yeah. oh wow look at this it actually has the map of all the the points there we are up top there off to the left that is cool yep from barlow road yeah but i think that's what they do there it's like opens up and there's like a maybe there's a, like a little concession in there or something yeah it's cool. Look at the old, like, uh, I think those are what they used to tie up the cattle. Yep. Or, you know, they would hook those to the cattle yep. and kind of carry their... Yep. That's cool. And it looks like down here, Mom, check this out. You can actually scan these little RQ codes and it'll probably give you even more info. Very cool history. This is really cool out here, too. They've got this open air stage here where they probably do a lot of events in this entire field here and I love all these giant you know versions of the horse drawn you know little cattle uh, carriages I can't think of right now what I'm trying to say but yeah that's really cool and then all along here too they've got these informational placard set up there she goes oh you're having so much fun this is cool look at it. they've got all this info here's the uh, what the wagons would look like typical wagon dimensions total length 23 feet total height 10 feet weighed about 1290 pounds Wow, that's so cool. And here's the picture of what the inside would have looked like with all their supplies and extra wagon wheels. Dang, that's cool. And then like I said on the way in, you guys can kind of see where they've created these big, you know, wagon structures all throughout here. Wow. Wagon Master Metamorn Crawford, an immigrant of 1842, Metamorn Crawford worked for nearly a decade hauling freight around Willamette Falls 
He married in Oregon and served as provisional government legislator and settled in 1855 in Yamhill County. During the Civil War, the U.S. Army withdrew its troops from posts along the Oregon Trail that Crawford had organized. Wow, this is so cool through here. Just a ton. of information. In 1842, Dr. Lyah White recruited over 100 people to immigrate across the Oregon Trail. Sidney W. Moss at Whittler and Stonecutter joined the group. Upon his arrival, Moss went to work for John McLaughlin to survey the town. Abigail Jenny Scott traveled west in 1852. Her father assigned her to the task at age 17 to write a diary of the journey. Abigail's vivid words and pictures captured the sights, sounds, and tragedies of the trail. Wow, after arriving in Oregon, Abigail married Ben Dunaway. His health problems and financial mismanage thrust her on the role of breadwinner. She reared her family, taught, and made and sold hats turned her Oregon Trail experiences into real literature. She wrote Captain Gray's Company in 1859. And there she is right there. That is pretty darn cool. Yeah, all the way through here, just a ton of history. Love it. This place is absolutely beautiful and I really love the, just the architectural structure of all these buildings too are really pretty. And, uh, yeah, just a ton of info all the way through here. And the visitor center is not open at the moment, but uh, we might be able to actually peek the camera in just for a second. Hi. Yeah, this is cool though. They've done a great job of, you know, putting together a ton of info here. And I really like that they put the RQ codes up there too, so you can scan them and kind of get more info as you're doing it there's the front kind of front offices here and we'll kind of peek the camera in just a bit and there is a ton of other history and you know of course the little gift shop and things like that but I just absolutely love the the layout of this place is absolutely beautiful all right, let's go. Uh, let's go find Mama Creeper, and she wanted to go look at these ox that were over here too. <laughs> They've got this little placard here too. Abernathy Green, originally called Greenpoint, Indians gathered here for over 3,000 years to fish at the Willamette Falls. George Abernathy arrived here June 2nd of 1840 with the great reinforcement of Jane Lee's Willamette Mission. He took 640 acres just north of Oregon City, including a, a neck of land that extended to the Willamette River. Oregon Trail immigrants started arriving on rafts from Fort Vancouver in 1843. They were put in Abernathy's house and climbed up to Abernathy's Green, arriving in late fall or early winter. Most of them op opted to winter over the encampments at Abernathy. Nathy Green. During they stay here, they would scout out their place of the Willamette Valley and claim at the government land office and reply in Oregon City at places like Petty Grove's Red Store or Governor Apeneath Mercantile. And they've got some really nice old-timey renditions of the, you know, the historic Oregon City here with some old shots here of Oregon City Mills looking across the river to the newly built Willamette Fox or Willamette Fall Locks in 1874. That's cool. And I believe this is like a little rendition of okay, here's Main Street. Looking south, circa 1884. On the right is the Courier newspaper office in the Bank of Oregon City. The cross street beyond is 6th Street. And on the left is Oriental Hotel downtown, this time extended beyond 5th towards the mills. 
That is so cool. The nation's longest graveyard. Esther McMillan Hanna passed six fresh graves. Oh, tis a hard thing to die from the far, from friends and home, and to be buried in a hastily dug grave without shroud or coffin. The clouds filled in and then deserted, perhaps to be food for wolves. Wow. All along the trail, we began seeing new graves. Wow, it was taking a fearful toll on everybody. During the first two months of our journey, we passed hundreds of graves of folks that have died from sickness. And as you can see, they've kind of placed these headstones through here to kind of give you an idea what it was like to probably encounter so many deaths along that trail. Man, those were some brave folks, I have to say. Here's a bunch of, you know, a buffalo rendition of what you would see. She's with me, it's fine. Come check this out. You want to ride one still? Uh, the other ones are lower. <laughs> <laughs> she growled at one? Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. Oh, I think I can. So here we go. This is what you would have seen as well, not just the buffalo, but the oxen would have been very prevalent. That's very funny. strong animals. For those who fit out but one wagon, it's not safe to start with less than four yoke of oxen. So yeah, very reliable and strong animal along the Oregon Trail hey. road here. <laughs> you gonna be able to get up there? No, my legs are too short, but I would. I get up there. I can't get my legs. How would you get on the trail then? You'd need to get on one. Well, I'd have to jump to get on the trail. <laughs> I can't. Get up here? I think you could. So these are what you, if you didn't have the oxen on your, on your wagon or your, you know, with your folks, that you were going on the Oregon Trail with, it'd be very hard. I mean, these were what you needed, you know, to survive and utilize everything. You know, that was kind of get up there. Thing. I don't think I'm going to. Get up. <laughs> I, you know what? It's okay. I think. Isn't it? The other one's lower. Yeah, I think the other one's a little lower. I bet you can't do it. You don't think I can get on it? Come on, creeper. Up, no. Oh, you did. Very oh, good. That's very good. This trail is never going to end. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is neat. Look at this. It's an old, like an old canoe. They would probably fish. Wow. Another old little cattle here. Yeah, this is really cool. I honestly didn't know how extensive this was. Dang, look at those old wagon wheels. That is pretty darn neat. I think we're kind of going in the back entrance here because they've got all these kind of placards set up this way. Here's an old timey picture of some folks setting up camp here. When we camp at night, we form a corral with our wagons and pitch our tents on the outside. And inside of the corral, we drive our cattle with guards stationed on the outside of the tents. We have a cooking stove made of sheet iron and a portable table, tin plates and cups, cheap knives and forks, camp stools, and etc. We live on bacon, ham, rice, dried fruits, molasses, bread, coffee, tea, and milk. Now oh, that's cool. 
this is so cool look at this little log cabin so this is what you would have seen basically like you know amongst some of the stops or just you know when they did finally settle they would basically build these log cabins here oh wow look at that that is pretty darn neat <laughs> I was just gonna say I might spend the night. Okay. You know knock Let knock. <laughs> Let us in. <laughs> it's cold out here. We're on the trail. Let us in. And these beautiful statues too. This big elk here. Common to the ones in the Pacific Northwest. Elk can still be found in the mountains, but most of their habitat is in the valleys and flatlands. That's pretty very pretty so yeah it's too bad that the you know visitor centers you know not open it says it's temporarily temporarily closed so I'm hoping that this gets back open but I'm just loving the history through here and uh, like I said it definitely reminds me of a kid playing the Oregon Trail game on the old you know Apple green screen computer and I feel very fortunate to have grown up in Oregon and know a lot about the state and just feel very privileged to um, have such great history here. And check this out. As we're walking too, there's like all these old relics here of I believe different tools and whatnot they would use on the trail itself. There's another one kind of over here, just kind of pieces of them. But imagine how old some of these are. I think these were like what you would hook to the cattle and they would kind of, you know, either pull the cart or do some sort of work. Um, whether it be, you know, harvesting or, or digging. Pretty interesting. I, this guy. I do that one. This guy? Yeah, Gives it a little speed yeah. to get on him a little Let's easier. Let's take off and go down the, down the trail. Should we ride him down the trail? Yeah. All right. <laughs> you can help me boost my butt up on that one. <laughs> I got short legs. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. yeah, those guys are cool looking, aren't they? Yeah, it's neat. It's been a nice, a nice walk through here. All right, fellas. You guys see us soon. And just about a half block from where we were is the Hackett House. Since 1890, Mom, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I love the old Victorian style homes. The iconic Mike's Drive-In. This place is so cool looking. And I'm gonna grab me a malt. And this place is awesome. I love this, how you can just drive right up. So cool looking, look at this place, you guys. And uh, there's actually four locations. The one in Milwaukee, actually, I believe the original building that was like this one was torn down, but they got a brand new location in Tigard coming soon. But I just absolutely love this restaurant. I've never actually eaten here, but I'm in the business for a malt. And I love how you can just walk right up to the order window here and order, or you can actually park your car here, kind of old school style, with the uh, the drive-in. It's so cool, it's got like the old diner seats in here too. I just love the layout of this place. So awesome, all right, I just ordered me a malt. And uh, she recommended the chocolate one, so that's what we're doing. This is cool too, but we've even got some shirts here. And it looks like some hats. Absolutely delicious. And the cup speaks for itself. That's going to do it for today. If you guys are new here, make sure you hit that red subscribe button. That'll dial you into being a creeper today. You can ring that bell. That way when I creep, you guys will be the first to creep. And if you did enjoy this, give it a thumbs up. Till next time, creeper out for now. Peace.